Today's scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, church. <laughs> Good morning. So when Christina prayed, she so said, uh, I'll entrust Pastor Norman into your hands, thy hands, something like that. <laughs> so I said, thank you a lot. I really need, I really need strength from the Lord. So uh, please pray and, and trust me more often. <laughs> So happy Valentine's Day uh, this week. So what, what better topic to speak on than uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 today. But today I will only uh, speak on uh, from verse 4 to uh, 7. What is love? We all look for love and we all want to give love as well. Uh, sometimes, not all the time. <laughs> We want to show our love uh, to people, to other people, especially our family members, maybe not all. Uh, we try to show our love to our brothers and sisters, to our friends, uh, to the girl that you really like, uh, to, the, or to the boy. We all want to give out love uh, while we want to receive love at the same time. It seems that our life is not complete uh, unless, until we find love. So what is love? And, okay, I always have trouble with this, okay. Okay, mechanical engineer 101, you turn it on first, then you press the button. Ah, okay. So what is love? Uh, one of my favorite Christian poets, uh, when I was young, uh, all the uh, cards, uh, you have to pay $5 to buy a, a, a birthday card from a Christian store, uh, there's no, dollar shops, they can buy a card for 99 cents or a dollar. So one of my favorite uh, a poet that want to buy uh, wedding cards uh, or baptism cards is from a Christian poet, uh, Helen Rice. So one, one of her poems, he says, what is love? For love has become a word that is misused, perverted, distorted, and often abused to speak of light romance or some affinity for. A passing attraction that is seldom much more than a mere interlude of inflamed fascinations, fascination, a romantic thing or no lasting duration. We like to fall into love, especially for guys. Guys is a lot easier than girls to fall in love. Uh, when you see uh, girl A, oh, I just fall in love with this girl. And then the next day, you know, another girl walk by in school, girl B, oh, suddenly uh, the other love just disappears. Somehow it just disappears. And I fall in love with this girl, you know. And then a week later, and then this girl C, oh, this is the true love. So I fall in love. So for guys, it's, it's, it's easier to fall in love than, than, than girls. girls uh, but that's not my topic today. So we talk about that on some other time. But we easily fall in love. Uh, fall in love, it makes you sound like that, you know, I, I cannot control it. No, I just, uh, there's a, a ditch there and I, I'm walking. So one day suddenly I saw this girl and then I just uh, fell into that ditch. No, I fall in love. I cannot control it. And I am in love. Is that what love is about? Uh, people who, got, who are married for many years, 
Uh, after a while, they find their spouse, partner, boring. Uh, she changed. He changed it. When I first met her, she wasn't like this. <laughs> she was really lovable. <laughs> so after 20 years, somehow she changed. <laughs> and the wife would say the same thing to the husband. So another lady walked by and oh, suddenly I made a mistake 20 years ago. So this is the true love. So I fall in love with this lady, woman. So that is love. You fall into love. So love is just a, a feeling. It come and it go. First, uh, First Corinthians chapter 13 says from verse 4, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Nothing about love is romantic. Love is a great feeling. First Corinthians chapter 13, uh, very often it's being used in uh, weddings. Right? They love to read this passage uh, during the wedding. So very often we thought that this passage is about uh, love between uh, husband and wife, uh, man and a woman. But it, it is not true. Uh, Paul wrote First Corinthians, uh, the entire uh, book is not Talk, it, it, the focus is not on uh, husband and wife, man and woman. It's about church. It's about the love we find inside church between brothers and sisters. But it is actually the same. You can apply this uh, to the other love. But here, Paul is focusing on love between us, between members. Rick Lauren said, love is a choice. Love is not a feeling. Love is a choice. Even when you don't feel like it, you can choose to do it anyway. So the very first thing we have to realize this morning is that you don't just fall in love. It is a choice. It is a feeling. You need to have the feeling, but it's more than just feelings. It is a decision. It is a choice. You saw this beautiful, lovely lady walk by, but you made a choice, a decision that I will stay with my spouse. I will hang on to my wife, and I decided it's a choice that my love is only for my wife. It is a decision, a choice. In the Bible, it says very clearly, love is a choice. God never forced us to love Him. It is a choice that we choose. For all of us here this morning uh, at home, uh, we make a decision to follow Jesus, isn't it? Didn't we? Many years ago, you have decided, wait, there is one a song, a hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus. You don't just fall into uh, following Jesus, you have made a decision. Right? That's what we call it, a decision uh, to become a Christian. You made a decision to follow him. Loving God, you made a decision to love him. Love is more than just a feeling. It, it, it is a feeling, but it's more than just a feeling. It is a decision that you choose to love him. Love your spouse. Love the brothers and sisters in church, love your neighbors, love your family. True love is an action more than just a feeling. It's in the best interest of the other person. Christ gave himself for his disciples. He gave his life for the world. It is a decision. He chose to die on the cross for us. Love is a verb, not just a, an adjective. Love, what is love? This is probably the most profound, uh, exciting passage, very really important passage. If you miss this passage, uh, these few verses, 
you, you, you won't be able to enjoy love. Love is more than feeling. Love is a verb. Love is patient. Love is kind. Now that doesn't sound very romantic, isn't it? <laughs> love is patient. Love is kind. Right? It sounds like theology. Uh, like Sunday school teacher teaching. <laughs> That's not very romantic. Well, no, not much feeling in it. The very first uh, requirement in love Paul started off saying in verse uh, 4 is love is patient. And then when he end the description definition of love in verse 7, he ended with the same definition. Love is endurance, hope, patience, patience. So it's not this uh, love that it, it, it just came and then it came and go like that. It is endurance. I still remember roughly, you know, when I marry, when we marry, uh, Cynthia and I, Simone, uh, I forgot the exact wording of the vows. Sorry, Cynthia. Okay. But it's something like this. <laughs> Will you, Norman, have Cynthia to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort and keep her, and forsaking all others remain true to her? as long as you both shall live. Now, almost every wedding you, uh, you went to, the ending of the wow, the, the wedding wow is always something like this, that you both love one another as long as you both shall live. So this love warranty is not just uh, 12 months, it was only as good as last, the next July. <laughs> what? Lifetime warranty? Not that many things that have lifetime warranty. 12 months warranty is very good this day, right? even Costco. Right? You cannot expect lifetime warranty. But love is lifetime warranty. As long as you both shall live. This is the first test of true love. So Paul started off by defining love. Love is patient. You have to hang on, be patient, be patient, just like God had patience with Israel. God's love is everlasting with Israel. The theme of Old Testament, that the different uh, theologians will have different uh, themes for the Old Testament. Well, one of the uh, theme is that uh, Old Testament is about how God loved Israel. But his people keep abandoning him, forsaking him, left him, sin against him. So God is sad. Teach them lessons, punish them, and then always embrace them again, again and again. God's love is patience. Even today, I, I believe God is still waiting uh, for the Israelites, his people, to return to him. Why Jesus is not back yet? Jesus said that he will come back. That's in our uh, alliance uh, logo, you know, the, four, uh, uh, the four logos in, in the alliance. Uh, that Jesus will come back 2,000 years now. He's still waiting, still waiting, because he loves his people so much that he's willing to wait for over 2,000 years now, maybe even more. Love is patience, never ending. Not just 12 months or just okay, just this time. It's always forgiving, just like how parents love their children. Love is kind. Kind is more than just the nice, nice, the nice guy. But you don't hear people often say that it's, it's very kind. It seems that there are a lot of nice people, but not a lot of kind people. Kind is intentional, voluntary acts of kindness, selfless. So I look up the definition uh, of kindness. And then I, I found this, uh, all, all these definitions, all, all the um, 
um, words that can uh, represent kindness, benevolence, care, compassion, concern, courtesy, friendliness, gentleness, goodness, goodwill, grace, gracious, heart, helpfulness, hospitality, love, neighborly, patience, sweetness, sympathy, tenderness, thoughtfulness, tolerance, understanding, unselfishness. Wow. Okay, <laughs> that's a long checklist. <laughs> Check yourself. Do you have love? Do you really love others? Do you really love your spouse? Do you really love church? The people? Go through the checklist. Do you care? Do you have compassion? Do you concern about the church? Do you love this church or you just like this church? Courtesy, gentleness, goodness, goodwill, grace, loving, sympathy, tenderness. Love is kind. A couple of weeks ago, uh, Cynthia's car, uh, well, it's our car, the 20 year old Accord, uh, broken down uh, on Granville Street near 12. Uh, and it was almost four or five o'clock, getting late at night. Uh, so it took her a few hours. Then PCA came and towed the car away. Uh, it was a long night. I was at church and I went home. She came home. So she says, we tired, cold, dark. <laughs> Six, seven o'clock, and then she came home to cook. But there was a smile in her face. I said, why are you smiling? <laughs> uh, it must be a tough, tough time. You know? Waiting for PCA to, to come, and then the car stuck. I don't know where the car is. It's on the side street or way on Granville Street, blocking the traffic. So the, the, there were a lot of nice people, very nice people, very kind. But there at least five people uh, or six uh, stopped by, different people stopped by, and, and, and tried to help her to, to jump start the car. Uh, one guy uh, went to his car and took a, a, a battery jumper and came, but could not start our car. Uh, and then another guy actually walked home and drove his car back to start to jump start the car. There's a lot of nice people. So eventually it has to be towed away. Eventually it has to replace a starter. So that starter is more expensive than the car now. When people are nice to you, sometimes they make you forget uh, the difficult, hard times. They're just suffering. Love is kind. And then Paul went on and gave us a, a checklist. Do you really have love for other people? Uh, your spouse, your church members? First Corinthians is talking about church, about us, the community. Do you really have true love for them? Love, it does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. So it's a checklist. I love my church. I love the people. I love my brothers and sisters. Okay, first checklist. I'm kind, I'm patient. I love this church forever. Let's go through this checklist. Love does not envy. The first check, envy. Do you envy other people? When someone else can do something better than you, what do you feel? Say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. He sings better than me. When someone makes more money than you, praise the Lord, God really blessed him. When someone studies better than you, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Or when somebody is doing something better than you, you have this bitterness. How come I serve the Lord so hard, but he is, they are doing so much better than me? Envy. There's no place for love. First check, would parents envy their children? Would the father say that my son is smarter than me? I'm really mad at him. No, he is smarter than me. Or would the mother be mad at the, the daughter? She looks prettier than me. I'm mad at her. No, you won't, isn't it? Parents will be so proud. Uh, of their children if they are more successful. No parents would be, I'm so happy, I'm so glad 
all my children are no good at school. I'm better than they are. I'm so happy. No, because parents always love their children forever. So I always say that the, the, the parental love is the closest. Uh, the parental love on earth is the co closest to the love of God. Love you don't envy. You feel happy. Does not boast about oneself. It all tied together. It's all about yourself, isn't it? Envy, boast, proud. In the Christian tradition, the seven deadly sins, the number one is pride, arrogance. Uh, one of my favorite books from C.S. Lewis uh, is The Screw Tape Letter. It's about a senior devil uh, teaching a junior devil how to get more people into uh, hell. And the senior devil teaching the junior uh, devil, don't worry, just give that guy uh, success, uh, good virtue, uh, righteousness. Make him a good man. Don't worry about that. Then the junior devil said, what? Make him a good man? Yes, make him a good person. That everybody respect. That's no problem. And then just sneak in some pride, arrogance for him. He will fall. He will come down and join us. C.S. Lewis see pride as the greatest sin, the utmost evil. Because the devil became the devil by Pride. Pride is the cause of every otherwise. Pride, pride is the complete anti God, anti others. Pride is like bad breath. Everyone knows you have it except yourself. When there's pride, there's no love. Because you cannot love because you're only proud of yourself. We need to empty. We need to empty our heart, ourselves, before God can fill us with love. The word arrogance. The word arrogance was used seven times in the New Testament. Proud. Six times is in to describing the church of Corinth. Proud. When we are proud, we cannot have love, because we only think of ourselves. Love does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. Dishonor is rude, impolite, not appropriate, doing things that's not right, unbecoming dress, not in accord with the standards implied by one's character or position, Love, we would not be rude. It's not self-seeking. We don't only seek after our own self. Self-centered is the biggest sin that stops us from loving others. When all we can see is our own needs, me, me first, our needs, you don't have space to love. So Paul here uh, very clearly uh, defines the checklist. Love does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. If we empty our hearts of self, only then that God can fill them with his love. Love is feeling, willing the ultimate good for the other person. Love you have to put down yourself. Love is not easy, easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Are you a person that easily uh, angered? Are you a person that have a hot temper? The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. It keeps no record of wrongs. Doesn't mean that 
you keep doing the same thing over and over again. No, that is not love. No, I, I accept uh, the person right, just keeps no record of the wrongs, but he keep doing the same sin, wrong things over and over again. Uh, indulgence. So that's not what um, Paul is talking about here. When Joseph have uh, Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, "It is because God has made me forget." All my trouble and all my father's household. Love, you forgive. Uh, you may not be able to forget, <laughs> uh, but you forgive. That's love. And parents, again, I always go back to parents' love. Parents love the children forever, forever. And the children is always uh, make things wrong, set things wrong to the parents, upset the parents. But I never seen a parent who would never forgive their children, just like our heavenly Father. So one time, my, my daughter, uh, when when she was young, <laughs> little, she made me really mad one time, and I said, "Unless you apologize to me, I'm not going to talk to you again." So I went to the kitchen there and be mad. A few minutes later, I said, "Daddy, come help me, help me!" And then I start, "Yeah, I'm coming," and I start running to her. What's the problem? And then Simba said, "I thought you said that unless until she apologized, you would not talk to her again." I said, "Love keeps no record of wrongs." Right? This is very scriptural. Right? All parents are like that, isn't it? Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. What's Paul saying here? We we don't delight in evil. Right? We always trying to be truthful, to be righteousness. We never delight in evil, or do you? When we finish the worship today, there are not that many people here. Right? They did normal time when we finish worship, so we all go to eat in a restaurant, right? Normally, uh, not not today maybe, but normally when we are back, well next week hopefully we are back. We we plan to we open next week, so we just wait for. Uh, the the government uh, announcement on Wednesday, 16, uh, but we we plan to reopen. Uh, so after the worship, you all go to the restaurant. So what do you do in the restaurant? We will start uh, gossiping, criticizing this morning's sermon. Ah, Pastor Norman's sermon was so boring. I, I, the worship team wasn't that good. Uh, I had uh, the uh, the AV. They made a mistake. You know, this is ah, uh, it's too warm. You know, then we start gossiping, isn't it? Right? I don't know how many times when we when Christians gather together, we say that, Hallelujah, we are such good pastors at church. All all those wonderful elders. <laughs> I can see the elders start laughing. All those great elders, ah, uh, the great deacons, the great everybody in the church is Hallelujah, just so wonderful. I'm sure you 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 say that once in a while, but if you uh, balance it out, you probably have more negative comments, right? We would like to talk about negative things about other people, not just church, right? at work. We like to bad mouth about your company, your boss. Um, when I was working in engineering, the most of the time when we had lunch, we always bad mouth about the company. That's just this is no good. That's no good. No, these procedures are too tedious. Our days. Everything is no good.、Uh, I'm not happy here. You know, I only get, I don't get enough raise. But when it comes to me, I always say that I'm very happy working here with this company. I'm very happy with the company. <laughs> the company treated me well. That's why I stayed here for so long and、uh, treated me really well. I, I'm no complain. <laughs> even I said that what? I, said, I even like the coffee. Right? They said、oh, this is terrible coffee. You know, the company spent tens of thousands of dollars this year to buy the, all this.、Uh, Coffee, you know, he said, "Nah, this is lousy." So、uh, you always like to talk about negative things. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. We like to talk about good things in the church, good things about people. We rejoice with the truth. In ending, Paul once again go back to the beginning. Verse four:、uh, four. Love always protects. Here it seems that Paul is concluding with 
uh, four uh, virtues here, yeah, four requirements, yeah, actually it's only two, right? they're actually a parallel, right? in Greek it's like Hebrew, uh, it's a parallel. So it always protects and preserves, it always trusts and hopes. So Paul here again is talking about two things here, love in conclusion, just to remind the audience again, love, patience, protects, perseverance, not just one time, forever. Love, trust, and hopes. Paul is not just what well, it's not actually not talking about uh, love between husband and wife. Talking about church, we love one another, so we do not try to hurt each other. We don't bad mouth. We don't delight in evil. Bad mouth in the church probably do more harm than the ministry. Uh, that you have provided that deeply hurt people, hurt the church. Love, Paul reminds us, uh, be kind. We, we don't do that. We all share in righteousness. Righteous. Love is a choice. You don't fall in love. You make a decision uh, in a relationship. You stay, you desire to stay in love with a commitment. I desire to love. Uh, this group of brothers and sisters. I decided to love the church. I've been in this church for 50 years. 50 years? Maybe they make me really old. But I've been here a long time. I have a chance to move to another church. But I just decided to stay here. I decided to retire here. And unless the church won't let me stay here. <laughs> there are rules. When senior pastor retire, they may not be able to stay here. But I decided to stay here. Um, I've been invited to other churches over the years, uh, but I decided I, I choose to stay here. It's a decision. I decided to love the brothers and sisters. It's, it's a decision. Love is a decision you have to make. It's a choice. But Pastor Norman, it is hard. I, I choose to love my spouse, my husband, but I cannot. You have not met my husband. It is impossible. Yeah, I know what you mean. I try to love that brother in church. But the way that he speaks just annoys me. I cannot stand him. I try very hard. I made a decision, but I just can't. Yeah, sometimes it's hard. Love never gives up a message Bible. Never cares more of others. Love, trust, persevere, have patience, kind, does not boast. It seems that Paul is describing Jesus here. Pastor Norman, only Jesus can fulfill this criteria in First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. So when I read again, you're right, you're absolutely right. Paul is describing Jesus here. No one else can, can accomplish all this. Patience, kind, does not envy, does not boast. Even I boast, I'm not, not proud. Does not dishonor others, not self-seeking. Who can say that he is totally not self-seeking? Not easily anger, I'm, I'm angry sometimes. Keeps no record of wrongs, does not delight in evil. Sometimes I, I try not to bad mouth people, but sometimes I sleep. But rejoice with the truth. Always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You're right. Only Jesus can do this. So what do we mean by Pastor Norman? Love is a choice. I make a choice, a decision, but I still cannot do it. And I agree with you, we cannot do it. Then I scratch my head when I end this sermon. Love is more than a choice. Love is more than a feeling. Love is also more than a decision. Just because you decided to love your pastor, sometimes you cannot. <laughs> so I just cannot love him. I'm just using this as an illustration. I'm not suggesting you should do that. I'm just really trying to love that colleague at work, but I just find it so unlovable. Yes, I totally agree. Then, and I continue to read on the Bible. Now I know love is more than a decision because we cannot love. Oh, how terrible. I spent 30 minutes talking about something that no one can do. 
Sorry, guys, you cannot do it. It's hopeless. We are hopeless. Dear friends, let us love one another. Yes, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Ah. The third point here. This is the key. We cannot decide to love. Even if we do, we cannot love. We just don't have the love. Love comes from God. Love is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, faithfulness, the fruit of the Spirit. We have no love in us. We cannot control ourselves but to say bad things about other people. I, I cannot control it. I, I try very hard. I try to sip up. But once I got open my mouth, I will say bad things about some people, my colleague. Because there's no love in you. You can make a decision to control yourself, but once you unzip your mouth, once you unzip your heart, you have no love. Love comes from God. Wow, this is serious. This is very serious. You, you better listen well. If you cannot do what Paul is describing here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7, even if you desire to love, it's because you don't have the Holy Spirit controlling your life. Love comes from the Holy Spirit overflowing from your life. Love comes from knowing God, not just knowing the Bible, but knowing God. It's a relationship, not a knowledge about God. So this morning, if you find that I just, I have decided to love other people, to love the church, but somehow I, I, I cannot. The reason is you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. You don't have this relationship with God. Love comes from a natural overflow of the fruit of the Spirit. When you have God in you, when you are in a good relationship with Jesus, this love will flow out. It's a natural outflowing. It just flows out. You will find that people around you are so lovable. You cannot stop to love them. It's because it's not you. It is God. God loves everybody in this church. If you do not have this love, because you don't have the Spirit controlling your life, it's very dangerous. You may be doing a lot of things, but yet you don't have this fruit of the Spirit from you. So help us, help all of us this morning to ask God, Spirit, to fill us with His love. It's only through His love that we can love others. You can love your spouse. I cannot love my husband. Yes, it's more than just a decision. You need to have this Holy Spirit overflowing from you. I cannot love the people at church. Some people, well, some are more lovable, some are less. It is because you don't have this Holy Spirit working in you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. So by ending, I want to uh, finish the poem that I started by Helen Rice. This is the latter part of the poem. What is love? No words can define it. It's something so great, only God could design it. Wonder of wonders, beyond man's conception, and only in God can love find true perfection. Only in God. Couples, you need to have your relationship in God. Brothers and sisters, you need to be feel controlled by the Spirit. Only then that we can experience this love that Paul is describing in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's pray. Father, we want to uh, once again entrust each one of us into thy hands. We pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit that only through the Spirit that we can produce the fruit of love. So that only then that we can love others. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.